we here in Cookville have so much variety. <laughs> yep, my home county was 90% Southern Baptist. <laughs> we had nine Southern Baptist churches to every one Dollar General. <laughs> Woo! My home county was so dry. How dry was it? I'm so glad you asked. My home county was so dry, we did not have even one single Catholic church. <laughs> not one. Not one. There was no. Because we were Southern Baptists, there was no wine on the west side in my home county. I did not meet a Catholic person by name until I was a freshman at a countywide consolidated high school with over 2,000 students. It was in typing class. My name is Brad Bull. I sit next to Monica Margaret O'Malley. <laughs> I held Monica at arm's length and the distrust was because of an experience I had when I was 10 years old. My family had gone back to see my grandparents on their farm back in the motherland in the Far East, you know, up around Bristol. <laughs> and we ventured for some some Christmas shopping in the big metropolis of Elizabethan. And my parents, we were going down Main Street and my parents went into a department store and I had two foster brothers and they shooed us down the sidewalk and, and we were really excited because we, oh boy, they're, they're shooing us away while they go in the store. Maybe we're going to cr get Christmas questions this year. Yeah, <laughs> school teachers. Um, so, so we're going walking down the street and we're all bundled up in our heavy coats and toboggans and up ahead of us, all of a sudden, with his back against the storefront, we saw a man in all black. Black pants, long black trench coat, black fedora, and a white collar. I immediately recognized him as a Catholic priest because I had seen so many of them in uh, movies. <laughs> <laughs> and as we're approaching him, I want you to picture heaven's best angel combined with Mr. Rogers. He looked at us with such kindness, a smile, and as we're approaching him, he was just smiling, and then we passed him, and just as he got out of my peripheral vision, he said a word, and in my imagination, his face changed from a smile to match the word I heard. I heard him go, shoo, and I thought, shoo. I know we went out and fed cattle before we came. Maybe we got manure on our shoes, but he just said we stunk. How mean. Now, fast forward. That was my first impression. Fast forward to the summer of 1983. I have just finished my junior year in high school, and I go at, as a foreign exchange student to France. I arrive on a Saturday. And the family, we were in rural Western France, and the family said they had noticed on my little get to know you form that under hobbies and interests, I had checked religion. And they said, we, we are going to take, take you to church tomorrow. And so the, the next morning though, it became very apparent to me that getting up and going to see nuns on Sunday morning was, was not their habit. <laughs> and, and eventually the mother just gave up trying to rouse everybody but 12 year old Morgan she was dressed and ready and, and, and she said Brad Morgan will take you to church so we go walking and off in the distance I hear the church bells ring and we're, we're late but we get there and it was about this little church was about the size of this tent just like this center aisle uh, and, and, and we got there and Morgan said Brad do you want I do you? And, and so we stepped in the vestibule and she dipped her finger in this big bowl of water and, and she done like this. And I, I dipped my hand in the big bowl of water and did like this. I felt like just like I was in a movie. And, and then we, we step in and you got a picture of this. It was 
the front six rows were crowded. I mean, they were packed in the first six rows and the back was empty and it's real quiet. There's somebody, they're all standing and somebody's lighting candles, real quiet. But you need to know, it was a cobblestone floor and I had on my best pair of Sunday dress shoes, the very pair of cowboy boots that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> Have you ever tried to walk quiet like on a cobblestone floor wearing cowboy boots? I promise I was trying to be quiet, but I, and I, I was as quiet as a bachelorette party on the back row of Brad Paisley concert. <laughs> and we're starting down through there, and the, now the second tallest person in the building was sitting on the front row, standing, now standing, and he, hears, he turns around, and everybody turns around. And they're all wide-eyed as now 6'4 me comes walking down the aisle past all these wide-eyed 5'5 five, five Francophiles. And I'm thinking that, that Morgan's just going to slip into the last empty row before the crowd. No, she glides all the way to the front row. She turns the corner and it's packed. And she just all of a sudden holds up her hand and the front row parted like the Red Sea and we just kind of squeezed in, and all of a sudden I get nervous. I've noticed there's, there's no priest. There's two, two women, nuns, leading the service. And, and I start thinking, I've seen all these movies where people had their first drink of hard liquor, and they go, Pleh. now, I grew up Baptist. We used Welch's grape juice for communion just like Jesus did. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm gonna, they're going to use real wine. They're going to use that hard stuff. And I'm going to spurt and spew and make a scene. And I was so anxious. Well, we form a line. For, Morgan insisted I go first. And we get up there, and, and there's about four or five people in front of me. And the, the nun holds up. And we use little Baptist chicklets. They, had these, they hold up these wafers as big as the moon. And she holds it up and she says something. And the people receiving it say something. I can't make out what they're saying. And I thought, well, I know what my mama told me when I received a gift to say. And especially when they're giving you the gift of the body of Christ. And so the woman, she holds it up. And I guess she said Corpus Christi or something, you know, body of Christ. And she hands it to me. And I said what my mama taught me to say. But in French, I just took it and I went, Mercy. And her eyes got as big around as those wafers. And she looked like one of them people on the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers. She's like, Protestant. And, and I, I sat back down and Morgan then came and slid in beside me. And she said, Brad, what did you say to the woman who gave you the bread? And I said, I said, mercy. And she said, oh my dear, you're supposed to say, amen. <laughs> I get back to the United States and I'm telling this story to my, my French teacher, Madame Taylor, and the whole time I'm doing she's doing like this. And she said, Brad, please tell me that you did not wear cowboy boots to a worship service in France. And I said, yeah, why? And she said, now how do I say this in a way that you can use at a family friendly event in the future? Uh, Brad, in France, cowboy boots are the trademark of male companions for hire. <laughs> now, people of Cookville, I am 57 years old now. About six years ago, I was over here on Maple Street watching my TV, and I was watching a DVD of MASH, and all of a sudden, Father Mulcahy said, bless you, my child. And I thought, he smiled, and I thought, he looks like that priest in Elizabeth. Bless you. <laughs> That priest didn't say, Sh I'd had a toboggan on. I didn't hear the blah. I missed the blah. He had said, bless you, my, bless you. But thank goodness, due to the renewal of the mind through transformation. Now, when I replay that scene in my head, I see him smile all the way through. And I hear him say, bless you. And I look back over my shoulder and say, Amen. <laughs> <laughs>